The design of the 3710 hydraulics makes best use of the current closed-centered hydraulic systems of today's tractors. To fully optimize even the largest 3710 coulter drill at a wide range of seating speeds, Burgo recommends that your tractor can provide 45 gallons per minute hydraulic capacity. About 30 gallons per minute will be required through the depth control hydraulic remote. Keep in mind, the 45 gallons per minute recommendation is to cover the complete hydraulic requirements of the seating system, which may include two air seater fans. It is possible to operate your seating system with less hydraulic capacity, but you may find the drill will raise and lower slower on headlands. Various hydraulic control blocks used to control the 3710 independent coulter drill are located on the mainframe near the hitch. The directional valve block is positioned on the front of the mainframe closest to the hitch hinge. Once the hydraulic system for the openers is pressurized, the electric switch on the 400 control box can perform the raise and lower action of the seating arms. A second hydraulic control block located on top of the front mainframe beam is the opener down pressure block. This block enables you to adjust the trip and packing force of the opener through the Model 400 control box. On the right hand side of this block is the electric solenoid that's used to remotely adjust hydraulic pressure to the seat openers from inside the cab. Generally, operating pressure is set between 500 and 800 psi, but this will depend on field conditions. This control block also has a pressure gauge which will display the same value as the gauge on the Model 400 control box in the tractor cab. In the event of a failure where the electronics become inoperable, you have the ability to continue seating by manually adjusting this solenoid on the block. For manual adjustment, first idle the tractor and engage the depth control remote so you can read the pressure setting on the gauge. Next, Remove the electrical connector to the solenoid to eliminate any possible intermittent electric signal that will interfere with the manual setting. Loosen the lock nut with a wrench and use an Allen wrench to adjust the set screw. While watching the pressure gauge on the block, turn the set screw clockwise to increase the opener down pressure, and turn the screw counterclockwise to decrease the pressure. Remember to tighten the lock nut when you are finished setting the opener down pressure. You can now continue seating until you have an opportunity to fix the electrical problem. Once the electrical issue has been corrected, you must again loosen the lock nut on the solenoid, back the adjustment set screw all the way out, reset the lock nut, and reattach the electrical connector. If you do not do this, you risk exceeding the safe operating range of 500 to 1500 psi. On the side of the opener down pressure block you will see additional valves. These are factory set and do not need to be adjusted. The opener lockout valves located to the rear of the opener down pressure block are used to lock the depth control circuit of the coulter arms in the raised position so you may do maintenance under the 3710 frame and prevent the accidental lowering of the openers. The manual valves can be set so one row of seat openers are locked up for double row spacing. Please refer to the operator's manual on how to modify the air kit to enable the double row spacing option. Another option is to set the valves to lock both rows of seat openers in the up position and use the optional MRBs to ban fertilizer. The optional MRB down pressure control block is located beside the opener down pressure block on top of the front mainframe beam. The MRB control is synchronized with the seat opener hydraulic control so the MRBs will cycle with the seat openers when you flip the switch on the Model 400 control box. The MRB down pressure control is not adjustable from the cab and is only adjustable on the frame. To adjust the MRB down pressure, energize your coulter arm pressure circuit in the down direction and read pressure setting on the gauge. At the MRB down pressure control block, loosen off the hand adjust lock nut 
turn the dial clockwise to increase the pressure, and turn counterclockwise to decrease the pressure. Watch the pressure on the control gauge on the MRB block to determine when you have reached the desired pressure. Once you are done setting the pressure, simply return this lock to keep it from vibrating into a different position. You should only have to set this at the beginning of the seating operation, unless you encounter an area where the banders have difficulty in penetrating, such as hard dry soil. The factory setting for the MRB down pressure control block is about 1,075 psi, which is sufficient for a wide range of seating conditions. The mid-row bander lockout valve allows you to lock the mid-row banders up when they are not in service. It allows you to raise the unit so that the banders are out of the ground. Close the bander lockout valves and your banders will no longer move up and down with your seat opener control circuit. To reactivate the mid-row banders, simply open the ball valves. The gauge wheel has several purposes. The first purpose is to work with the packer wheel to maintain the set seating depth consistently. If the operator needs to increase the packing force, this gauge wheel can be locked up so all the down force is acting to the packer wheel. The operator must be aware that in this orientation, seating speeds and field debris will have a greater impact on seed depth consistency. The second purpose is to help contain the soil displaced by the disc and thirdly, to keep the outside of the disc clean. There are two different options for gauge wheel widths. The first is a 3 inch wide wheel. The second is a 4 and a half inch wide wheel. The 3 inch wide gauge wheel will work well in the widest range of seating conditions. The 4 and a half inch wide gauge wheel may be required where the soil is loose and a narrow wheel may sink too much. There are two positions to mount the gauge wheel on the arm. The default position is on the outside hole or closest to the Coulter disc axle. The inside mounting position may be required when the unit is operated predominantly with the gauge wheel in the locked up position and the disc is collecting soil on the face. The inside mounting position will clean the disc more aggressively in the locked up position. The gauge wheel has a number of shims between the wheel hub and mounting arm. These shims are used to set the pressure of the gauge wheel to the disc. The pressure should be such that the disc will turn by hand yet feel some drag from the gauge wheel. In extremely wet conditions it may be necessary to set the gauge wheel more tightly to the disc. This is done simply by removing the wheel and move shims from the inside to the outside of the hub. If the disc is not turning freely in very light soils, it may be necessary to set the gauge wheel further away from the disc. This is done by removing the wheel and adding more shims between the wheel and the walking axle. It will be necessary at times to check how the low disturbance or anti hairpinning scraper is seated to the Coulter disc. Wear, maintenance, and general operation may cause the scraper to move out of alignment to the disc and affect the quality of the seating job. It is important to follow these steps when adjusting the scraper to the disc. Step A. Snug up the top nut so the urethane scraper puck is compressed about 1 16th of an inch. Step B. Tighten the rear nut until the leading edge of the scraper is parallel to the disc face. Step C. Tighten the front nut until the edge of the scraper is touching the edge of the disc. There should be even contact to the entire scraper edge. If not, repeat steps B and C until the full length of the scraper's leading edge is touching the disc. Once you are done, you should be able to turn the disc by hand with only minimal drag on the disc. The scraper must maintain a set distance to the cutting edge of the disc for optimal performance. This setting should be checked periodically to account for disc wear. The anti hairpinning scraper edge should be no closer than one and one quarter inches from the cutting edge of the disc. 
the low disturbance scraper edge should be within zero to one eighth of an inch from the bevel. The edge should never protrude past the bevel of the disc. Loosen the main nut located on the scraper assembly. Move the scraper assembly up or down using the notches located on the side of the scraper assembly as a guide. Each notch represents one quarter of an inch. Snug the scraper assembly and check that the distance is set correctly. Make sure that the scraper assembly is seated properly in the notches. Once the distance is correct, tighten the large nut so that the scraper assembly is secure. After adjusting the height of the scraper, it may be necessary to readjust the alignment of the scraper to the disc as noted in the scraper to disc adjustment. It will be required to change scrapers as part of regular maintenance. The process to changing low disturbance scrapers and anti hairpinning scrapers has a few differences that will be noted in the following procedure. There are two three-quarter inch carriage bolts holding the scraper assembly to the arm. Loosen the front carriage bolt so that it is almost completely off. Loosen the back carriage bolt, but not as much as the first. The front hole of the scraper is slotted, so the scraper should now swing off the front bolt and hang on the second. Remove the back bolt and scraper. When replacing a low disturbance scraper, reverse the process. Secure the scraper to the arm with the back carriage bolt, but leave it loose. Rotate the scraper up into position so that the front carriage bolt fits into the slot on the scraper. Ensure that the opening on the cast scraper fit into the seed tubes on the arm. There is a boss located on the cast scraper. This boss should fit into a locator in the arm. Ensure that the scraper is well seated before tightening both bolts. When replacing an anti hairpinning scraper, the process is similar but requires a bit more attention. Secure the scraper to the arm with the back carriage bolt, but leave it loose. Rotate the scraper up into position so that the front carriage bolt fits into the slot on the scraper. Ensure that the opening on the cast scraper fit into the seed tubes on the arm. There is a boss located on the cast scraper. This boss should fit into a locator in the arm. There are two locator pins on the cast scraper. Ensure that these pins are pressed up against the mounting plate before tightening the carriage bolts. The purpose of these pins is to ensure the scraper is working at the optimal angle to the direction of soil flow. When secured, the anti hairpinning scraper should have approximately a 1 8 inch rise from front to rear. The packer wheel is factory set to center over the trench created by the disc and scraper. Typically, the packer wheel alignment should never have to be adjusted. There may be seating conditions where the operator wishes to adjust this alignment to help close or pack the trench more aggressively. There are spacers located on each side of the mounting bolt for the packer wheel. Simply remove the nut securing the spindle, remove the wheel assembly from the arm, and rearrange the spacers as required. Mount the wheel assembly onto the arm and secure with the nut. Be cautious when adjusting the seating depth of the coulter arm assembly. It may be possible for your fingers to get pinched between the depth pivot handle and the walking axle if the walking axle is lifted up and rotated to its maximum position while your hand is on the depth handle. Note, when adjusting depth, only lift on the depth handle and not on the walking axle. Take time to check the length of the tertiary hoses when you receive your new 3710. These hoses run from the secondary manifolds out to the openers and mid-row banders. When in the field position and the openers are lowered down to the ground, the hoses should always maintain a downward slope and not rub excessively on any drill components. Shorten any hoses that are too long to reduce the risk of plugging. 
take special care on the outer wings of the larger machines. Remember the openers can travel downward from their normal working position so it is also important not to cut the tertiary hoses too short. After any hose length changes are made, wing the drill up and down to see if there is any hose kinking or pinch points. Refer to the air seeder kit layout that was included with your manual for the initial delivery of your unit.